Phelps, Bukowski. B-Cop says he located a green Kaiser Fraser from the hot sheet. Address is 6 West 2nd Street. Get over there and see what you can find out. Go on. Sorry to inconvenience you. We're on it, Captain. I don't care. I don't go in for letting gangsters I swear the more free. bent cars we bring in, the longer the hot sheet gets. It pays the rent, though. Keeps Mrs. Phelps in the manner to which she's accustomed. I'm not sure she'd agree with you. Passionate romantic type like you, Cole? I don't believe a word of it. <laughs> yeah, I want to make homicide. You know, got it made. You get that bad. Can you drive to this one? Calling her the Dahlia now. Wonder what Veronica Lake makes of that one. What a case. You hear whether they're making any progress? Well, Captain Donnelly seems to think they have it all wrapped up. Brown and Green are sweating this manly character. I heard it'll be in front of a grand jury by next week. Poor thing. Terrible enough being murdered like that without having your death strewn all over the front page. the car, Cole. Just pulling out of the drive. Get him. Remember, we need him healthy enough to answer questions. 1247, Detective Phelps requesting immediate backup in pursuit of a stolen green Kaiser Fraser from 6 West 2nd Street. Into his wheel, Archie. Come on. <laughs> Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. All right, all right. Maybe I was a couple miles over the speed limit. Get bracelets on him, Put your hands where I I'll can see them. Why did you run from us? I saw a big car in my rearview mirror with two tough guys bearing down on me. What would you do? What's your name? Cliff Harrison. You're under arrest. For what? What are you talking about? Nice try. I'm talking about the car being stolen. You're out of your mind. I bought the car, and I've got the paperwork to prove it. Looks like we'll have some questions for the people at Coombs Automotive. You purchased this car from Coombs Automotive Company? Yeah, that's right. And the ownership papers? Are from the same place. This is a forgery. It's top notch. This will need to be traced. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. Harrison? No, nothing like that. You better give us something, Cliff, or we're going to make this hard on you. I didn't steal the car. I ran because... because I've got some wacky backy in the glove compartment. How much, Cliff? One reefer. We'll let it slide. You're in enough trouble. <laughs> Who did you deal with at Coombs Automotive? The owner, Richard Coombs. And he made out the bill of sale personally? Of course he did. He kept a facsimile for his records. Check with him. We're going to get to the bottom of this, Harrison. Until we do, you're going downtown. You gotta be kidding me! 
I'm getting arrested for buying a goddamn car? If everything is legit, Harrison, you'll be out soon. Until then, if I were you, I'd keep my mouth shut. Bag his possessions as evidence and have him arraigned for Grand Theft Auto. Right, Detective. You know who my father is? We need to get to Coombs Auto and check out Harrison's story. You can drive. <laughs> Do we know where we're going? You know what? I think he's telling the truth. Some of the most convincing people you will ever listen to are born liars. Usually they're called politicians. Not another step. I have got a Buick Century sedan that would be absolutely perfect for you. Detective Phelps, LAPD, are you the owner? That's right. Richard Coombs, at your service. You looking to trade in a black and white, boys? <laughs> Mr. Coombs, we're investigating an auto theft. A man by the name of Cliff Harrison claims he bought the car here. Well, uh, some people would say that my cars are a steal. That's a joke, son. Very amusing, Mr. Coon. I remember Harrison. It was a green two-tone Kaiser Fraser, if I remember rightly. Do you have the bill of sale? It's in my office. Walk this way. That's a joke, too, son. Phelps, you mind if I shoot this guy? He's getting on my nerves. Here it is. Got the original pink slip there, too. Gene Archer, 146 North Fremont Avenue. Harrison's purchase receipt was legit, at least. We have a couple of questions. All right, fellas. Shoot. Can you tell us how you came to buy the car? Girl just wandered in right off the street. Nothing unusual about the car. Not really my usual type of vehicle. The price was certainly right, though. Nice girl, but about as sharp as a bag of wet mice. Did you pay with check or cash? A check. She wanted it made out to cash, but I insisted. Man has to watch his cash flow. What name? I made it out to Gene Archer on the Bank of Arcadia. Can you describe this Gene Archer? Brunette, maybe 25, 26. A little on the plump side, but not bone ugly. What was your impression of her? Kind of harried and harassed. In a hurry to go somewhere, but no place to go. You get to know the type. Do you know anything about the company that prints these pink slips? Nope. Should I? It isn't exactly my business. It says Marquee Printing. You've never heard of them? Marquee. Sure. They do all the government red tape. You'll find the place down on Aliso Street near San Pedro. When exactly did you hand over the check, Mr. Coombs? Close of play on Friday. Why didn't you pay her cash? You knew the car was dirty. I had an inkling. 
When people are in a hurry for money, always pay by check, son. Gives you a couple days to back out. This was all above board. Yes, of course it was. Did this look legitimate to you, Coombs? I'm in used cars, son, not bearer bonds. In my business, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Now don't come on all high and mighty with me if you want my help. Thanks for your help, Mr. Coombs. We need to continue the investigation. Hope you sort out your problem with Mr. Harrison. Go easy on him, son. Boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. He's built too low. The fastballs fly over his head. Let me shoot this guy, please. You have a pleasant day, Mr. Coombs. Well, Harrison might be off the hook, but we can still run an APB on Gene Archer. Get on the horn and call it in. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? Requesting an APB on Gene Archer, age approximately 25, on suspicion of Grand Theft Auto. I'll relay the information. Messages, please. A James Velasco is being held at Central Station on suspicion of GTA. Possible link to the Harrison case. They're waiting on you to conduct the interview. Thanks, ma'am. You're behind the wheel. All right, where to? Here's a chicken and egg question for you. Do you think you have to be an asshole to sell cars? Or that selling cars turns you into an asshole? You've got it in for everyone today, haven't you? I've always got it in for car sales. It doesn't matter what day it is. And why do they always think they're comedians when they're about as funny as a heart attack? Maybe the more annoying they are, the quicker you sign on the dotted line just to get the hell out of there. Empty. Should have known that Archer Broad would have given us a false address. We should go to the station, see what this Belasco guy has to say. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Uh, where are we going? Detectives, Belasco is prepped and ready in two. Another stolen car with legit papers. Thanks. I want to make homicide. You know you made it. I'm not as dumb as you look. He's away from the police force. Good looking boy like that should go into politics. My acting coach says I have real talent. Hey, hey. I gave his wife a chance, I said, oh, crummy bastard. James Belasco? I want a lawyer. It's my car, and I got the proof right here. Take a look for yourself. Canary says you'll sing, but... The paper is real enough, walk. Belasco, but the car isn't yours. This pink slip is a forgery. That bum took a swipe at me and put him down in my sap. Where were you taking the car, James? Blow it off, Greenhorn. You'll get nothing from me. You're a two-time loser. If you don't give me something, I'm going to ask the DA for the maximum. You're looking at 10 years, Belasco. Kiss your youth goodbye. 
I, I want a deal. Keep talking and we'll see what sort of deal you're worth. My job is to drive the cars out of state. Nevada, Arizona, sometimes New Mexico. With the paperwork they provide, it's normally a breeze. Does the name Jean Archer mean anything to you? Nope. Never heard of her. You're a liar, James. Say that again. I'm telling the truth. I don't know the broad. So that's why you both have the same address printed on your pink slips. She's a mule for these stolen vehicles, genius. Same as you. Jesus. All right, I know her. Stupidest broad I ever met. Always cooking up crazy schemes. I don't know why those guys use her. You happy now? What happens to the cars once they cross over the state lines? I don't know. I just deliver them. Give me something, Velasco, or I'll take you back to the cells and tell the whole station you're a child molester. How long do you think you'll last? Okay, okay. I hear you. The cars get sold in Chicago or back east. Sometimes I bring back cars coming the other way. Where do you pick up the cars, Velasco? Warehouses. Mainly in the east downtown. An address, Velasco. You want my help with the DA? Cough it up. Now. A place on Industrial Street. I don't know the number. You're gonna help me out, right? Keep talking, kid. We'll see what we can do. All right, James. We're gonna check if this information is worth anything. And if it is, I need your help here, pal. If it is, then we'll know you're a man of your word. And so will the DA. You're Phelps, right? Yes, I am. Look, can we do this later? I'm in the middle of it. Ray Pinker. I'm with Technical Services. The pink slips are all real. Yes, we know that. There's only one company that prints them in California, the Marquee Printing Company. They've confirmed that the numbers are legitimate. You've checked them out? Sure. They're on Aliso Street, near the corner of San Pedro. The guy I spoke to was Lightvall. Gordon Lightvall. Here, I wrote it down. Thanks, Ray. This is a great lead. We'll get down there as soon as we can. 1947, not 1927. Where's the girl from Phelps, your GTA suspect, Gene Archer, spotted by a patrolman. Western Union office, 253 South Hill. Less than a minute away down the street if you run. Go! She won't hang around. I want to make her. Need this. Are you drunk, mister, or are you just cracked? That's a guy from the papers. Solved that big case. I survived the war for this. LAPD. Oh, Susie, we'll take it you from here. are God so damn it. bad. Everyone's against me. Look, just let me get my money and get out of here, okay? You look sweet. How about giving a girl a break? I could be very nice. I'm afraid I can't do that, Miss Archer. Stefan, call for black and white. Just my luck to get the only hair sure cop in the LAPD. The car you sold to Coombs was stolen, Miss Archer. There won't be any money. I handed over all the right paperwork when I sold it, Buster. Gene, you've blown open the whole operation because you were dumb enough to try to sell one of the cars. What do you think they're going to do to you? Give me something. 
I was just doing what they do. They pay me 50 bucks to drive the car. I made two grand selling it. You made zero. And if they catch you, you're dead. Is that all your life's worth? Look, a girl needs things. I don't see you looking out for me. How long have you and Belasco been delivering cars? Who is James Belasco? You're lying. James Belasco. I don't remember mentioning his first name, Miss Archer. Oh, I... Well, I think you did, didn't you? Well, I'm sure of it. Anyway, I don't know him. You aren't sharp enough to lie to me, Jean. You and James Belasco share the same address on your pink slips. We have him in a cell. Okay, so I know the creep. The pink slips are real. The home addresses are always vacant lots. Bigelow is always boasting that the paperwork is legit and that if we stick to our stories... And don't try and sell the car? Yeah, that too. Tell me where you picked up the car, Miss Archer. Look, I, I can't remember. Let me go, will you? Please. What have I got to do? I'm trying my patience here, Jean. I'll have the reporters down here and have your picture in all the papers. You'll have nowhere to run. All right, already. I get the message. I pick up the cars from a guy named Bigelow. 58 Industrial Street. Big warehouse full of goons. Now, you've got what you want. Can I go? Please? No, you sure can. We've got a car waiting outside for you. Some career advice, Gene. Get out of crime. Marry someone boring who has money and will find you captivating. Is this guy for real? He takes a little getting used to, but yeah, he generally means what he says. During one of the most crucial periods in the making... He plays the saxophone. Oh, and boy, did he get me going. <laughs> Can you drive to this one? So, where do you want to go? Friendly girl, used to getting her own way. Little did she know her feminine charms were useless against the impenetrable Cole Phelps. She's not my type. And what is your type, Phelps? I'm married. I know that. But you're not blind or dead inside, are you? Wait, scrap that second half of the question. Uh, I don't know. Blondes, I guess. Hallelujah! The man is human after all. Now we're getting some. Yep, I'm with you on the blondes. Brunettes are fine, too. And there's nothing wrong with a good redhead. <laughs> But I draw the line again. You know, I might have to lift that embargo soon in the interest of maintaining a free market. A man with high standards. The standards are only as high as the last glass of whiskey. Marines were gung ho, Cole. You have a 45. Don't you ever want to use it? I'll take the back. Just give me a few seconds to get around there. Cole Phelps, LAPD. All of you are coming downtown with me. Big Reinforcements are on the way. Cease and assist. No, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead.
Throw out the guns. As he his head out, we step on it. Floor. I don't want to get drilled on the back of the way out. Covering fire! Weapons on the ground, now! Try the door at the end. I heard something. All right, all right, don't shoot! Keep your hands up. Watch him, Bukowski. He doesn't move until I've tossed this place. There are enough slips here to keep them stealing cars till Christmas. Marquis Printing Company. <laughs> There's nothing like going direct to the source. slip. Looks like Mr. Lightfall has been on a losing streak. We've got a trail of pink slips and stolen cars that leads right to your door, Bigelow. You're in this up to your neck, but I don't think you're the man in charge. Make it easier on yourself. Give him up. I had to work on cars for customers. You charge in here shooting up the place like it's the Ballad of Bulge. I can't give you anything. We know about Marquee Printing. You can make this easier on yourself by giving us your man on the inside. I sometimes repair cars and put them back on the road. I need a pink slip to resell them. There's no problem there. There are at least four dead men in this warehouse. A couple more. Punks won't make for that much extra paperwork. We'd be doing the legal system a favor. Okay, okay, tough guy. I get the message. Lightfall. The guy who runs Marquis, he's the big shot. He likes to spend big at the track. He owes people. Lightfall, the guy with no luck at the track. Tell me about him. It's one of the guys lying over there. You're right. He has no luck. That's the best lie you can come up with, Bigelow? Hey, would I lie to you, detective? I'm not exactly in a good position here now, am I? Gordon Lightball owns Marquee Printing, a government print shop. He's losing big at the track. He has these big government contracts. He's in hock over 20 grand. If the feds find out, the contracts will be all over. Lightfall plays ball. All right, Bigelow. The heat is off you. 
Play your cards right and you'll be able to count your time in Quentin on one hand. You know the way. You can drive. Fine. Where are we headed? I swear, this town is straight ahead. What a mess. Ugh. Gonna take some cleaning up, that's for sure. I wish it hadn't gone that way. Well, we shouldn't bring guns to work with them. We didn't have a lot of choice. You have to admire the bare-faced cheek of someone who tries to blow your brains out one minute and pleads innocence the next. Yeah, especially when he's surrounded by evidence. But guys like Bigelow spend so much time convincing themselves that they're not doing anything wrong that they actually start to believe their own bullshit. They get sloppy. Bigelow, Lightball, all of them. If they hadn't, who knows how long they could have kept this racket going. Complacency or greed. It's always one of the two that brings them down. You're under arrest. I'm sorry. Just what the hell are you talking about? We found a box of pink slips in a warehouse full of hot cars. You signed for them, Lightbulb. I signed for all the orders and deliveries. You'll need something better than that, cowboy. Save it, Lightbulb. We already have all we need to send you down. I've had enough of this. You either produce some shred of proof, or I call my attorney. You're in the hole with the organization. We know about the debts, Lightball. I agree. I have a small problem. I'm prepared to help you in any way I can, Detective. I'll name names. Uh, I need you to keep this out of the paper. I need... You need to shut up now, Lightball. Gordon Lightball, I'm charging you with conspiracy and fraud. Hands behind your back. The LAPD Central Traffic Division has today smashed a nationwide auto theft ring, writes crime correspondent, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here it is. Traffic squad detectives confronted a large group of armed thugs. After an exchange of gunfire, more than a dozen dead criminals were removed from the scene. The LAPD sustained no casualties. Damn fine work, Phelps. Now get out there and nail some more bad guys, will you? I want to finish reading this.